بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي يا فتاح يا فتاح يا فتاح أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى in the Quran of Majid he says يا أيها الذين آمنوا O you who believe إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة when you are called for prayer جمعة prayer فاسعوا hasten إلى ذكر الله to the remembrance of Allah and leave all types of transaction all of your business, all of your play leave going to the mall, leave hanging out with your friends leave the buying and selling, leave any business deal which you may think is uh, very profitable which you may uh, spend time in instead of the dhikr of Allah leave that because the dhikr of Allah is much more important this is much better for you the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much better than for you than any business deal that you may make in this time in kuntum ta'lamun, if only you know. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In kuntum ta'lamun, if only you know, this is something to take heed with. For example, if a friend he tells you, um, Hey, invest in this certain stock, or uh, for example, Bitcoin. A while back, Bitcoin was very big, and when it first came out, nobody had any value for it. It was very, a thousand Bitcoins was like, I don't know, a dollar or something. It was very low in value. A couple years later, if you had invested in Bitcoin, if you had invested $100 in Bitcoin, you'd be a millionaire today. There are millionaires that are millionaires now simply because they invested a couple dollars in Bitcoin. Now, if you had a friend who told you to invest in Bitcoin, or if you had a friend who, uh, he was a very intelligent friend, he was a friend that only wanted good for you. He wanted, uh, and he was very smart in business, or he was very smart in predicting the stock market, the rise and the fall, when to invest, when to uh, take out your money, all of this. And he told you, invest in Apple, invest in Google, invest all your money in this, or uh, buy this product, and a couple years later, the value will go up by a hundredfold, and you'll be rich, or uh, make a shoe store here, or make a chicken store here, make, a, make anything, whatever they tell you, because they say, I know, you don't know. So you would trust them, right? It's somebody that you know is very intelligent and they only want good for you. In an instant, you would do it, no problem. I'll, I'll invest my stocks, I'll buy this store, I'll buy these products, whatever it is, because you know that that's gonna have a big payoff. You trust this person. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's no mere human. He's not your friend. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the creator, he's the maintainer, he's the sustainer. He has all of the dunya, all of wealth. He can put it in your pocket or he can take all the wealth if you're a millionaire out of your bank account in a snap. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, leave, leave the business, leave all of this because the dhikr of Allah is much better for you. Now this is something we should trust because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the creator, sustainer, like I said, he maintains my entire body, he maintains every single person here, he maintains your wealth, he maintains your health, all the things that are harming you, Allah is maintaining your immune system. Your immune system does so many things that we don't even know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the maintainer of all of that, he's telling you, leave your business, leave your transaction. Leave anything, leave everything besides the dhikr of Allah. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though He's telling us, leave business, He's only telling us for the short time, which is Jum'ah, which is around an hour, maybe less, instead of which for the Yahud, it's Saturday, the entire day. You go to a Jewish neighborhood, mashallah, they observe it very strictly, but the entire day they're not allowed to touch money. They're, all their businesses, everything is shut down, everybody's just home, it looks like a ghost town. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah yuridu bikum al yusr, wa la yuridu bikum al yusr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants easiness for us and not hardness for us. So Allah lifted that burden from us. He only gave us one hour just, just to leave this business transaction, to come here on Juma on this blessed day, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to come for once again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has blessed us with a blessing that honestly we don't recognize the value, and no matter how much you're being told of the value, you will never truly realize the value. I will never really truly realize the value of this until the day of judgment until you see your ajr on the day of judgment until you see your scale of deed all those jumas that you went all the sins that allah forgave you for coming to Jum'ah, then you'll realize then you'll be like wow alhamdulillah i came for Jum'ah." and for those people that didn't come to Jum'ah, they're going to be tearing at their skin they're going to be like woe to me curses to me i'm so dumb 
I miss Juma for this. I miss Juma to hang out with my friends for another hour. I miss Juma to go play basketball. I miss Juma to play video games. I miss Juma for another hour of sleep. What value did sleep have? Nothing. But this Juma, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could have forgiven my sins. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could have given me Jannah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could have risen me in my ranks in Jannah. Now the ranks of Jannah, they can, they are quite amazing. There is a story of a man in Jannah. He's reclining, relaxing in the gym, and he feels a drip of water uh, fall into his mouth, and he's like, he tastes it. He says, "Wow, this this tastes really good." So he goes around his entire garden, all of his garden, all of his rivers, all the honey, everything. He eats all of his fruits. He tastes takes a taste of everything, and then he asks the angel. He's like, "I I felt a drop of water fall into my mouth, and it tasted very sweet. Tasted very good." And I went through my entire jannah, and I couldn't find anything that tasted this good. And the angel was like, "This droplet of water came off; it fell off of the foot of the person whose jannah is one rank higher than you. And this person achieved achieved this one rank higher than you simply because he said, Subhanallah, one more time, just for saying Subhanallah one more time. The droplet of water that fell off of his foot tasted better than everything in the man's jannah who is one rank under him. And." The blessings of Juma are many. For example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of Jum, uh, on the day of Friday, Juma, He created Adam alayhi salam. He uh, gave Adam alayhi salam the ruh. He Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent Adam alayhi salam to jun dunya, the the earth that we're in now. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tiba alayh. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, forgave him. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, He gave us preference over the other ummats. For example, the Yahudis and the Christians, Nasara, and Rasulullah he uses an analogy for, of the days of the week. He says that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday were given to the Yahud and Nasara, the Christians and the Jews, but Friday was given to us. We were the last of nations, we are the final nation, but we will be the first one, as in we're going to be the first one that Allah is going to judge and Allah is going to send us to Jannah. In another narration, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, Rasulullah says, "Juma is the sayyid of all the other days of the week. Juma is the leader, the head. All the attention of all the days is on Juma, is on Friday. Now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He's given Friday so much preference. We should also give Friday this preference. We should have our entire week looking forward to Friday, not for play, not for anything, simply for Juma, for the remembrance of Allah, for all of us to come together and remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala together." Another blessing of Juma for the sign of a good death is if a person he passes away on the day of Juma, and it's said that whoever passes away on the day of Juma, Allah will save him from the adab of the qabr. On the day of Juma, Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for every single day of the week, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He makes that coals of hell hotter. Now, for the respect of Juma, for the respect of Friday, Allah does not do that. On the day of Juma, Allah doesn't. Ignite the coals anymore. In Jannat, there will be on Fridays um, a sukh, which is a market. Now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He has forbidden us to go to the markets on the on the day of Juma, or not the day of Juma, but the time of Juma. On the in Jannat, Allah is going to allow us to go to the markets. There's going to be a specific market in Jannat on Friday for us to go to, and in that market, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He's going to send a wind, rih, and with that win, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to increase our beauty, our honor, our dignity with that win. So the people, when they go to the market and then they come back home to their family, their family is like, subhanAllah, what happened? You look so much beautiful, you look so much more handsome, you look so much more dignified. And the people that went to the market, when they come back, they're going to be like, no, wallahi, you, you look more dignified, you look better. Every Friday is going to be like that, you're going to look better, better, better. The way Jannah is, is it only increases. It only gets better. You never get tired of it. The way the dunya is, even if you were the king of the world, if you had all the luxuries in your hand, in your lap, anytime you wanted it, I guarantee you would get tired of it. Every single king in history, every single rich person, they all get tired of their luxuries. And they'll, if you ever speak to them, they end up getting, they're like, oh, it's boring. Oh, this, this, and that. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? This is amazing. It's because they've experienced this so much. The way the dunya is, it's limited. It's not forever. It's not getting better all the time. It's, it stops. A music, a song that you like, you play it for however long, five times, six times, whatever, and then it gets boring. You don't want to hear it anymore. A food, your favorite food, for example, macaroni and cheese, 
or your favorite foods, apples or pasta or lasagna or biryani or anything. You eat it enough times, you end up getting bored of it. I don't want it anymore. Jannat, it's not like that. You get a fruit, take a bite. Wow, it's pretty good. Take another bite, even better. Another bite, even better. The next fruit, even better, even better. Everything just increases. You're asleep. You don't need to sleep. But if you want to sleep, you can sleep. Anything, your smell, your beauty, everything just increases. But Jahannam, on the other hand, it's only increases in punishment, in adab, in pain, in misery, in hopelessness. So, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a quite a, a difference there. And if we go to Jannah, inshallah, we'll all experience that. Uh, another, the greatest ni'mat on Jum'ah is our now on Jum'ah. On Friday in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to show His noble face. And of all the things that you could ever want, in Jannah, you'll be given things that you will not even be able to comprehend in this world. Jannah is a place that no heart has ever desired. You, the things that are there, you, you, you cannot comprehend now until you get there. Now, on, on, in Jannah, there's going to be uh, the day of Jum'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reveal His face and that's going to be the greatest blessing there. On Jum'ah, in this world, uh, there is a specific hour in the day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts every single dua as long as it doesn't uh, have sin in it. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the to me dua on that hour. Now, with all of these blessings, with uh, the blessing alone of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing us for Jum'ah, of the blessing alone of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us tawfiq to remember His name, to remember Him, we should make shukr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who make thanks for my blessings, I will increase Him. And those who uh, disbelieve or do not make thanks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will in increase in their punishment, uh, them in punishment, in painful punishment. There was a Sahabi who was asked, um, what is the greatest dua in translation for us, what you can understand that as? Dua is asking. So when you say, what is the greatest dua, you're basically saying, what's the best thing you can have? The Sahaba radiallahu anhu, he said, the greatest dua that you can make is hamd, is shukr, is to thank Allah. So the greatest thing that you can have is not a material thing. It's not that you can be given something. It's so that you can thank so that your mind, you understand all the blessings that you're given, that you truly are blessed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will reward you for that thanks alone. It's not to get something. The greatest thing is to be thankful for what you have. And Alhamdulillah, we're here for Jum'ah. We should be thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give us the value of put it in our hearts to love uh, working or to love anything else other than coming to Jum'ah so that it didn't distract us to come to Jum'ah, from coming to Jum'ah. There are people, for example, celebrities, most of celebrities, they've, what do they, what do, they do? They unfortunately chase money. That's how society becomes. Money, money, money. Number one thing, forget family, forget friends, forget myself, forget if I'm a good person, forget if I pray, forget if I do anything. As long as I have money, people will like me. I'm a good person. If I make a million dollars, that's it. I'm a great person. It doesn't matter what I do. It's unfortunately the status of many people and unfortunately our youth are falling into that. So we need to make sure that Allah doesn't take us away from now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the tawfiq to come here so that next time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a tawfiq again to come here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a better realization of the blessings of Friday. Allah subhanahu wa uh, the benefit of or rather our status in uh, our good deeds is such where there's a story of on the day of judgment there is a man when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he, he goes to Allah for his reckoning and this man he, he his entire life there's some say 40 years some say 400 years his, his entire life he didn't sin his entire life worshipping Allah alone only doing good deeds not for the blink of an eye did he ever sin now, he meets Allah on the Day of Judgment with all the good deeds, his good deed scale is super high, his bad deed scale completely empty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, do you think that you will earn Jannat or I'm going to give it to you as a favor? As in, do you think you deserve Jannat? The man's going to say, I deserve it, of course, I made no sins. I, I've only done good. 
Saul does one of the says, okay, let's find out. He sends his angel, he says, go check his good deeds, see what his good deeds earn him. So the angel goes and he checks, he counts his good deeds, he comes back and the angel says, oh Allah, his good deeds didn't even earn him his two eyes that he had in the dunya. Forget about the akhirah, his two eyes in the dunya, he didn't even deserve that with all of his good deeds. So this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really does bless us. We don't deserve anything that we have, even in the dunya. Forget the akhirah. Akhirah is something far beyond. We could never do anything to deserve that. So we need to make sure we need to know our place in front of Allah that we truly are very meager. We truly are very small. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really did bless us with the hamd that we do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all He says is just make sugar, stay away from sin, do good deeds, command to good, stay away from evil, reject from the bad and I'll give you things you don't even deserve, things you couldn't even deserve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving it to us all the time, even in the dunya. Now, ways uh, earning this jannah is, it's not something very difficult. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the Quran, He has given us Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he's, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us many ways to <coughs> earn jannah. One thing, if, if it's very difficult for you to uh, do good deeds, for example, in whatever status, maybe you're in a, a bad emotional state, bad mental state, whatever it is, just stay away from sin. The person that stays away from sin but doesn't do a ton of good deeds is better than the person that does good deeds along with bad deeds. For example, if a person prays, does all these good things, on the, at the same time he's doing a lot of sins at the same time, he's worse than the person that just stays away from sin and he doesn't do a lot of good deeds as well. So may Allah SWT give us to, to stay away from the sins. Never be despondent of the hope of Allah. This is not just an advice, this is a command of Allah. Hopelessness from Allah is haram. This is not in Islam. Hopelessness comes from shaitan. Anxiety, fear, depression comes from shaitan. This hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there, He's always forgiving. He will always be there ready to accept your forgiveness. He's always there ready to help you. This is from Islam, from Allah. Anxiety, fear, depression, all these things are from shaitan. So, if there's ever a hopeless time in your life, no, this is from Shaitan. This is not from Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act upon what has been said. <coughs> <coughs> 